On the strength of this past weekend's win for Edgar Berlanga scoring a knockout over McCrory, word on the curb is that he could be Canelo's next opponent. Whether you like it or you don't, I say it's a much better fight than any of the Charlo brothers. Welcome to Deep Waters. Oh my goodness. Drama surrounding Canelo Alvarez and his deal with PBC. We're going to get right into it. All right, ESPN analyst Tim Bradley, what do you make of the news that Canelo is going to leave PBC, mainly if you believe the reports, because he doesn't, they don't want to set up a fight between him and Jamal Charlo? Well, you know, Canelo's going to follow the money. And if, if PBC doesn't do what Canelo asked him to do, then he's going to go somewhere where they are going to do what he wants to do, do what he wants. So, um, you know, I'm hearing that it's going to be possibly Berlanga. I, I think he's like the, you know, front runner right now, um, especially after this weekend. Berlanga got that huge knockout win against a mediocre guy, a guy that's really, I would say, C-level type of guy. However, it's still a knockout. Uh, it's put perspective back on, on Berlanga with his punching power. Uh, I think it's the perfect D, the perfect DNA for Canelo. Uh, limited amount of risk. A guy that has limited skill um, and ability. Can punch, however, has has some uh, notoriety in the game. Um, you know, you got that Puerto Rico-Mexican rivalry that can go on. Um, you know, and just again, that perfect amount of like risk and narrative that Canelo's looking for at this point in his career. So Canelo, again, I'm going to tell you guys again, he's trying to, to maximize his money. He's trying to exit the game, still on top, and that's the reason why he won't fight against Benavidez. There's no point for him to fight against Benavidez in his eyes because he's felt that he's already done enough in the sport. 17 world championships. He feels that it won't even add to his legacy. So when you have a fighter like Canelo believe in that, and you have fans like ourselves that says we want to see you fight against the belt, the get against the best, and you're holding down all these belts. It's in our eyes, it's disrespectful. However, in his eyes, it's like I'm in control. I'm the cash cow. I can do what I want. All the sanctioned bodies are going to follow suit. And so, you know, Canelo Alvarez could we could be seeing Canelo Alvarez in the near future. I'd say in May uh, against Berlanga. Tim, I want to piggyback on something you said that he's trying to maximize the money and that he probably is, then fight Jake Paul. Give up the belts <laughs> and fight Jake Paul. Why not? If you're, if you're maximizing the money. Nah, right? but that's the, the, that's the problem. He's trying to Why maximize. Not? He's prioritizing the money and, 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 and disrespecting the sport, but at the same time, he's trying to sell it like he's not. So, and, if, and if you fight Jake Paul, you can't sell it like you're not. He thinks we're all stupid. And a lot of, I hate to say it, he's got a lot of groupies going on and chasing him. So they'll make any excuse they want to. Even if he was to fight Jake Paul, they'd make an excuse for that too. Uh, but I'll be honest with you, he's trying to sell it like he's not making a fool out of everybody else. You know, so if you fight Jake Paul right now, especially at the, at the level of, of, uh, of boxing Jake Paul is at in this moment, y you would be disrespecting the sport and it would be hard to sell it as, as you're not doing that. So he's trying to sell it like he's not doing it. And he thinks everybody's stupid. You know, what? we're, we're finding all, out a lot of people are, but not everybody is stupid. Well, listen. Is he already it, disrespecting the sport by not fighting Well, well and Tim like, made a good point, too. You know, you can do what you want. The money, it's all about the money. Well, if it's all about the money, then this is not a sport, okay? At least not, prior, not first and foremost, which it should be. When we're supposed to be watching a sport. We're supposed to, be supposed to be talking a sport. We're not supposed to be talking about stage entertainment like WWE, okay? So, so the fact that we, this is not a sport first, the fact that money is dictating all of this, and the fact that Canelo believes that too. I mean, and he, and he can't because he, you know, he's projecting reality. Nobody's stripping him with the way they should. Well, then, you know what? I guess we're watching stage at that moment to that to that degree. I mean, we can say everyone's stupid who is following it, but really, I mean, they're moving very smart. Canelo's moved the way he's wanted to. Matter he sued Oscar De La Hoya back in 2020 because Oscar couldn't pay him the money they wanted. Basically, because of coming off of, of the and pandemic, he didn't get a fight that he got in. That's why he fought those four times in 13 months. But he does what he wants. He does. He didn't want to fight. The fight for PBC, he didn't want to fight David Benavides. He didn't like the money that was coming his way either way. So he's like, I'm, I'm, contracts don't matter to me. I'm the man. I can do it. I can move any way that I want. And he does. He has, he has a lot of power. And to you, both your points, t t champs, listen, he can do whatever he wants. He doesn't care. He's going to get the bag. He's going to keep the belt. He does he's in care, control. though, because if he gets stripped, he'll be offended. No, so he but does he doesn't care. care because he has the belt. The, he has the governing bodies yeah. on his side. Exactly. Not gonna exactly. Him. So, he has so, power. Yeah. That's what I mean. He's moving smart because him. he has the power. He can do what he wants.
And he and does. Who's going to strip him? I, or who's going to strip him and lose out on that opportunity? To get, it's to too get much money. It's, it's, he, he, can, he can defend against the, the sliding door over here. And, and, and you know what? The, the sanctioned bodies will get more and more, listen, more you know what? than At they would. At some point, he probably will fight the sliding door. But for now, he's going to fight these guys. Well, for that now, he's going to fight delivery drivers. He's going to yeah. handpick the fighters that, that have the records that, that can match him up. They can, he can get the win. He can make secure the bag. Well, then I'll, he'll fight Jake Paul. I, then he'll fight the guy who makes your sandwiches. I will defend Canelo in this regard. I don't think he is, again, this is alleged, but I don't think he's leaving PBC because they wouldn't make the Jamal Charlo fight. I don't think it's that cut and dry. I think it's, I think what, I'm, what I've heard, it's that they can't secure his minimums, and his minimums are high. It's about 35 million a fighter, at least, or something like something to that degree. So, so if they can't secure his minimum, if, it's all, always an if here. Um, if they can't secure his minimums, uh, we know the Amazon deal isn't exactly structured the way Viacom, Showtime, CBS was doing it for, for PBC. We know they have to pick up some of the fees themselves. So we don't know if the actual budget is there as well. If that's the case, then I almost, you know, I, I can't blame Canelo in that no, regard. Your, your minimums with, are your minimums. That's what you did with Dale Hoyer. Right. That was exactly what it was. Mm. The minimums yeah. weren't met, so, so, so he left. it has nothing to do with not being allowed to fight Jamal Cholo. I, I think the, the the Jamal Cholo fight would have probably become a, a conversation point and a, and a possibility if if these minimums were able to be uh, uh, absorbed. Canelo for all intents and purposes, wants to be able to fight that garbage can for $35 million. If you can't pay him that $35 million... Uh, I would like to as well, by the way. Yeah. I, I'm not yeah. knocking him. Who would? I'm saying I'm being... I'm being... I'm just generalizing. Right. He, he wants I, to be able to pick his opponent at the question, same time. I got a question also, for the panel. Also, get, get his minimum. If you, if you were in Canelo's shoes right now, would you do the same thing he's doing? No. Ask yourself that. No. And and no. the fans at home. You Ask can't, you can't buy me, dude. I've been offered six and seven figures to come back to fight myself. I, and I and I turn it down. You can't buy me, bro. There's not enough money to buy me. Okay? It doesn't matter. I have enough money to pay my bills and I live well, and that's all I need. You cannot buy me. If once you allow yourself to be bought, it's a problem for me, okay? Because it, it's gonna hurt the entire scope of the sport. The sport has a future, it's supposed to have a future, and fighters coming, fighting their way out of poverty, fighting with, with dreams, kids, te teenagers, have to be able to follow this and, and, and follow in this path to, to accomplish their dreams and make that money and, and support themselves off this sport. By doing this kind of thing, it hurts the standing of the sport, the legitimacy of the sport, and the more that keeps happening, the less money will come in. I just went over the fact that PBC's deal with Amazon is not the same deal they had at Viacom. They're picking up a lot of the fees, so there's less and less money being injected into the sport. Some networks all are, are dropping it all together. You're gonna continue to hurt the sport if you keep doing things like this. This is bigger than a person like Canelo, or bigger than anybody, as much as they don't wanna believe it, as much as his groupy friends and fans don't wanna believe it. This is bigger than any of that. This is this is important to do things right for the legitimacy and standing of the sport because nothing is perfect. But when it becomes this imperfect and when it becomes all about the money and nothing else mm. but the money, then we got a problem, bro. We got a problem because this can't. People are not going to get you to get suckered when it's just groupies left and and regular fans keep walking away, walking away. And I know a lot of fans that have walked away from boxing during my career. Friends, I got friends and family that used to be big boxing fans that over the course of my career, my my tenure in in boxing between the amateurs and the pros was about 25 years or 20 years. People that I knew that were hardcore boxing fans when I started were, not, were no longer following the sport but, uh, uh, by the time I, I got done boxing. Even in the middle of my career, I stopped, stopped watching the sport. So you're losing the general fan. The groupies are always going to be there, okay? They're, but they're not, that's not going to be enough to carry that kind of money for the sport Look, to keep staying legitimate. And guys like this have a responsibility. Canelo, they have man. a responsibility. Because you're not allowing the next, the wheel to keep turning, bro. Because the, the stardom also gets passed down who, by whoever beats this guy. And I'm not saying Edgar Belanga can't beat this guy. That's a big opportunity for Belanga as well, 26 years old, if, if, he gets this, if he gets this fight. But nonetheless, it's supposed to be done right. It's supposed to be done right. And, 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 and you can't be allowed to choose and pick your way through opposition. When you are a world champion, there are supposed to be fundamental rules in place. And if you don't defend, you got to be stripped. And it happens to all of us, except that, that small 1% of fighters who are, make so much money that the stretch is actually body don't like apply the rules. That sounds like a perfect world, Polly. That sounds like a perfect world, but it's not. But we're you talking know. about that here. We, what are we, if we wild, don't defend the sport, west. we got to defend the sport wild, here. West, we got to defend the legitimacy of this sport, at least try to make it happen. This, but comes, but this comes down to always the same question, the same answer. The governing bodies need to be able to, to strip these guys and do the right thing, but they won't because it's, it's exactly what you're talking about. I'm not going to blame the fighter. Tim, your, your point saying, would I have done that? No, we, we know how I was. I was a warrior. I fought, I fought really tough guys for a lot less money. But 
it, it, I don't blame I don't blame Cano for taking the easier fights to make the most money. That's that's what you're supposed to do. That's what oh, a manager's man. job does. That's what they do. But listen, to your point, Paulie, just because he can doesn't mean he should or and doesn't mean he will. And he is. Chris, I mean, he should be Chris, he should be thinking more problem. about his legacy, but he's not. Chris, another problem. You're talking about sanctioning bodies. Mauricio Suleiman said again, he said that that uh, Benavidez is the number one mandatory for Canelo. So he would have to be stripped if they follow their rules. But said Tim, and do are different. We things. know that I'll that's believe not it going when to I see happen. It. I, I'll we'll believe, believe it when yeah, I see I'll it. I believe it when I see it. Now, I mean, said it, you know, said Suleiman's saying different the right things. thing right now. Suleiman's saying the right thing right now, but we have to believe it. But I, but look, Al Heyman and PBC can't afford to lose Canelo. They can't. I, I'm pretty sure that's how they got that Amazon deal was because of Canelo. Just be, just, I'm telling you right now, just be very cautious. Al Heyman going to come out. He going to come out from the back door, man. He going he to think of something. We, we might be talking a different story to tomorrow. Use. Trust me, man. Mm. He going to put it to use, and he's going to find a way to pull Canelo back over at PBC if, if he's going to go over to the zone. And that's a great point, Tim. You know, you mentioned that before we went on the air. That's a great point, man. And you mentioned it again on, you, on air. That's a great point because Heyman has been known to, you know, kind of, slowly move in, in the shadows, then all of a sudden, boom, yeah. drop a big all, bomb all on sudden, everybody. All of a sudden comes up with the money. So, and then, and yeah. Yeah, yeah, you know, it, so I don't know, man. I mean, I could, this, could this be the I biggest bait say, and switch? I can't say I'd be shocked, honestly, if this, if that happens. I can't say I'd be shocked. I would feel really bad for Berlanga if that was the case. Yeah. If they, that would I be mean, the, what, that what would am I feeling bad for Benavides? That would be the biggest thing. What, what am I feeling bad for Benavides? Well, the money can come up, but he still wouldn't get the fight. He still wouldn't get the fight. I was thinking in the perfect optimistic world where it actually is Benavides. So the bait and switch is like, oh, they were baiting us with Berlanga, and then it's I think the biggest tease is Benavides, because even if Heyman comes up with the money out of the shadows, can I still won't fight him. Yeah. He still wouldn't get that's, the fight. That's, that's, that's the writing on the wall. Let me guess. So you guys, guys, I got a question for you guys. Okay. Well, I got a question. I, 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 I got a question today, man. Go ahead. Go if ahead. You're Benavidez. What do you do? Well, do he's you fighting Vosnick. He's already, he already made do? his choice. He's moved up to 75. He's fighting Vosnick, okay. and that's going to make him the number. The man I'm talking about winner. you. I'm talking about you guys. If you were in his shoes, what would you be doing? I would do exactly what he's doing now. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'm, I'm going to make it look like I'm moving on. I'm gonna go bite, uh, beat a guy like Vosdick, who on paper looks the sport, looks the, he, to the eye test, he passes. Yeah. But yeah, in, in terms of time. in terms of being ready for this kind of fight against a young, hungry champion, absolutely not. Yeah, I don't I mean, think remember, it's Vosdick in his time was good. Was I mean, very he, good. He, he, let me, he, he, took, he unseated he, he, he unseated Donna Stevenson. He who, gave Arthur Better Biev his toughest yeah. test today, and, and he won yeah, his, his world title be, uh, unseating Donna Stevenson, who had had it for a lot of right. defenses. Right. He had a couple. Of, he had a couple of fights to come back, and you know I don't know if he's it. At, at full it's, form, it's hard. But, it's yeah. hard to get your yeah. level to, to that intensity. Tim, four, years, years old, yeah. four years out of the ring, thirty-six Especially years that, old, and fighting a young, strong, hungry champion who's probably the that's best. Getting guy he's with each fight, that's getting better with each fight. That's getting better with each fight. Exactly. Too, so. Exactly. Yeah. Me, so mm -hmm. you guys don't see Benavidez staying at one seventy-five, right? I mean, mm -hmm. he he takes this fight. If he wins it, he'll move back down to one sixty-eight because regardless of if it's Canelo. He's still got big names depends to fight. Depends what there his body to says, no, yeah, Jam. I mean, I it depends say. what your body mm -hmm. says. Sometimes, sometimes you don't have the option. You know, I, I remember end of my career, I got offered a, a WBA World Title fight against uh, Ricky uh, wait, Ricky Burns. Was it Ricky Burns? Uh, Ricky Burns. Yeah. Ricky Burns. Yeah. Ricky Burns. Yeah. Ricky Burns. Ricky, I forgot his name. Ricky Burns. And I thought he was a real beatable WBA World Champion. I was like, oh man, I could I could become a three time World Champion. And he was shot, and I was shot. Don't get me wrong, because he ended up losing the title <laughs> his next fight. But I couldn't make 140, bro. I couldn't make it. Oh. So you, yeah. a lot of times you don't have a choice. In the matter, and I think Benavidez has been at 168. He's a natural 68. He's a big 68. He's big. It's not Canelo who's come up little by little 268. Well, Benavidez is actually coming coming down from 200 plus yeah, pounds. He's so, a, he was a big. So if you big, allow big your body guy. to grow to light heavyweight, you may not come be able to come down. Hey, you think Benavidez can fight at heavyweight? Is that a possibility? Ooh, a small heavyweight. That's Maybe interesting, Max Cruiser, man. right? I mean, small heavyweight. No, a heavyweight. Max at heavyweight. That would be interesting, man. If I mean, he bro, fights at 55. I mean, I don't know, bro. I, I and, he, and he wins there, go up to heavyweight. He has, I mean, 6'2". Well, I, I think, think, I think, I think, even, I think a, even 75 is going to be, is gonna be yeah. not a stretch, but it's going to be tough. If you got guys like Anthony Yard who are explosive yeah. and can punch, uh, you know, yeah, better yeah. be of, obviously, Bivol. Um, yeah, heavyweights are bigger nowadays too, man. Yeah, so you'll, be, you'll be fighting. Oh, dude, he's, super he's it's different than when fights. Michael Spinks went to went to went to the heavyweight division. Right? Yeah, or even Roy Jones, there, or too, even yeah, Holyfield. Yeah, yeah. Holyfield. Well, Michael Spinks also had a very different style. Yeah. He wasn't he wasn't in there the way Benavidez is. Yeah. David is. Hey, yeah. Tim, I, I want to pose important. a scenario because I posed it to to Paulie and Chris in an earlier show. Let's okay. say Benavides he wins his fight. 
at 175. He stays at 175 and then beats the winner of Better BF Bivol to become undisputed at 175. I know this is a dream scenario. It's never going to happen. A lot of ifs. But I'm a, a lot of ifs in this one. Oh, it could. It, it could happen. And he beca he's, he's talented enough to become undisputed at 175. Does that make it, well, I want to say easier, but doesn't that certainly lend more, more attention or groundswell to a possible undisputed 175 champion against an undisputed 168 champion in Saul Canelo Alvarez? I know it's a, it's a scenario it, that's it probably would, never no, going to happen. No, but it would, be Canelo, a, it would make it more in demand. If Canelo's still right? relevant in the game, if, if Canelo's still relevant in the game, absolutely. I think he would how, take that. How would he not be relevant in the game if, he, if he's going to defend small against smaller fighters or, 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 le or lesser chances of fighters with lesser chances to beat him? I mean, and he won't it, get stripped. It's may, so. It may be able. To, it may be a possibility for Canelo to stay at, uh, as a world champion for 168 pounds for a while. Because even he said, what did he say in his press conference recently? He's going to fight for like five, four, five more years. Yeah, he did. Jeez. Say that. I, I mean, with the kind of fights you're giving us, we say, bro, uh, we say that we say that all the time. We're going to fight for this many years. He, he, dude, he is literally Father Time is creeping on this guy. Yeah, man. I don't know if he's on that level. I heard he's already he's super good at golf. He might be a better golfer now than well, he is he boxing. That's what I'm yeah, saying. He mentioned, he mentioned about golf and golf That's what I'm saying. So, you know, I don't I don't see Canelo staying in the game that, that much longer, man. I really don't, especially the way he's moving. You know, but dude, like but, but the dude, sport, dude. the sport, the sport of this, the, the, the actual sport itself, man. Like you how can you walk around and and, and think that you're you're this and, and you're the number one fighter in the sport or the cash cow in the sport, right? And not fight the best. Like, how do you feel comfortable with yourself walking around? You being you know a how he feels comfortable. You know how like, he feels comfortable. Ridiculous, bro. Mo money, 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 money convinces you have to be at the end. Yes. Though, you have to be at the end of your career. You have to be like Floyd with McGregor. Think about that. Yeah. His fifth the fight, he fought Good McGregor. Point. But he also was off for two years. I mean, that, yeah, I mean no, that, that, again, he, there was no world championship on the line. You're not stalling world titles no, when you're doing yeah. that. I, if Canelo did that, I'd be fine with it. You know what I mean? He's stalling. He's creating log jams at, at, at the weight class. That's the problem. And yeah. it's one of the better weight classes but, in the sport. But more, more in line with what Tim's point is, like when, when Floyd fought Berto, like he picked, he handpicked yeah. Berto for the end yeah. of his career, yes. which, which yeah. is yeah. a guy who really wasn't the yeah. relevant top guy, anywhere near the top guy at the yeah. weight class. But you yeah, but you do like, like to your point, movie. Tim. You do that at the end. Four or five years left in your career, and you're and you're not fighting the best guys around. No shot. All right, back here on Deep Waters. All right, Andrew Balanga picking up a big knockout victory over McCrory at this past weekend and solidifying his place. And then Eddie Hearn after the the fight says, "Hey, you know we might we might want to fight Canelo." All right, Chris, what do you make? Let's talk about Berlanga in the ring because the Canelo thing with Eddie Hearn we, that's that's madness. But let's talk about in the ring there. How did he look and? What was your evaluation of his performance against McCrory, even though he got a knockout? Right. So uh, Berlanga did what he needed to do. He needed to get a knockout. That's that's what this fight was for. Um, he looked he looked improved in his last fight before this one against Quigley. You know, he got back with his coach Mark Ferre, and they worked on some things. He saw some of the development developments that they've been working on in the gym um, show themselves in that fight. Uh, I don't think we saw a whole lot in this fight. There were certain things that he did better for sure, but he had someone in front of him who really wasn't going to push the best out of, of Berlanga, out of Edgar. So I don't know if this was the ideal fight if you were going to be getting ready for a Canelo next matchup mm -hmm. because I don't think Berlanga had to go into his bag in order to, to show the new things he's working on. He really just went out there and was like, this guy can't handle my power. I'm going to get him eventually. Um, he, he, he used his, his physical presence, his distance, and really uh, McCrory's fear of his power to control the pace early on, and then just slowly ratcheted up the pressure as the fight wore on. But was still making some mistakes, still got hit with some, some shots you didn't really need to get hit with. Um, I would prefer to see can, uh, Berlanga get another fight where mm. he can work on his development and so he can really work behind that jab. You know, Mark Ferre, we interviewed him recently, and he said that he wants Edgar's lead hand to be a lot busier, which I agree, I think, especially if you're going to be fighting at the top level, highest, highest uh, elite level fighters in the game, guys like Canelo. You need to have a good left hand. You gotta have a good jab. You've gotta be able to see the punches that are coming your way. Um, but McCrory wasn't the guy to bring that out of him. Maybe he jumps right into a big fight with a, with a Canelo type guy, and, and we see the things that they've been working on. We see the talent he has. I've been in the gym with Edgar Belanca. He has very good boxing mm. skills. He is. He he does have a boxing IQ. Just having the discipline to bring it to the ring on fight night is really what's going to be necessary for him to make it to that next level. And if that next level happens to be Canelo Alvarez, I mean, I'm not mad about it. I would rather him have another fight. But listen, timing's everything, and the opportunity's there, so you can't not take that fight.
All right, ESPN analyst Tim Bradley, what did you make of Berlanga's performance in the ring against McCrory? Hold up, hold up, hold up. I got something for you. Okay. Listen. That's what I thought of the ticking time bomb of his last <laughs> okay. performance. You know, we had Mark on the show. His coach, his coach was extremely honest. Me and his coach see eye to eye. We saw the same things, the same mistakes, some of the same habits. We we know, we know, or I know that it's right here between these ears, man, that Berlanga is lacking. He's lacking the confidence in his skills and his ability. Um, the jab. He said that they worked on the jab the entire camp. Like we spar rounds just with the jab alone. He goes out there, he throws maybe one jab, if not that, in the first round, maybe two jabs in the second round. Um there's a lot going on up here, man. Mentally, I don't know if he's if he's mentally intact to be fighting a guy like Anello Alvarez. Um, and I don't even think that he can beat most of the top guys out there. I mean, think about the top the top ten in this division, man. And ask yourself this question: Can he beat in Billy? Uh, it'd be yeah, it'd be interesting. Can he beat Benavides? No, he ain't beat no Benavides. What about Caleb Plant? Can he beat Caleb Plant? Uh, I don't think so. You know, um, Morel. Morel. Morel, can he beat Morel? Ah, no. Um, okay. Pachenko. What about Pachenko? Can he mm. beat Pachenko? Pachenko, you Pacheco. made him Ukrainian. Pachenko, not Pachenko. <laughs> huh? He's Mexican. He's Mexican. Pacheco. 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 You turned him Pacheco. Ukrainian. Can, hey, can he beat him? No, he can't beat. I don't think he can beat that guy. You know who's just coming to, coming into contender status. So you know when I look at Berlanga, man, he he, he has a lot of growth. That he needs. However, if you get a shot, just just saying, if you get a shot in this game of boxing, in this 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 sport or this business of boxing, to where you're in line to face Canelo Alvarez, you can't turn that down. I don't care what anybody says. You can't. Timing Whether is everything. You're ready Timing or is not, everything. you can't turn that down. It's an opportunity of a lifetime. It's life changing money for him and his family. It's what you've been working for your entire career. Amateur and pro, you know, whether he's ready or not, if he gets the opportunity, great. Great for him, you know. Hey, I applaud him. Good job putting yourself in and being at the right place at the right time. Understand that. Canelo, Canelo is picking and choosing, you know, who he wants to face. He doesn't want to face a lively dog at this point in his career. So this is the perfect remedy right here. It's like when you go in that room, you know, when you're buying a car and they saying, hey, uh, you want to purchase gap insurance? Gap insurance? Yet yeah, you want you know something happened accident? You cover you? You know Canelo. This is gap insurance for Canelo right here because something might might happen, something might not happen. But for but for the most part, you're prote he's protecting himself. You know, and his entity and his image. He wants to go out on top. He don't want to be taken out by these young guns. Uh, I'll be I'll be real quick. I, I, in some ways, uh, I, I think McCrory may have been the right opponent for Canelo in that McCrory doesn't give for you Berlanga. anything. Uh, I mean, for Berlanga, yeah. And McCrory doesn't give you anything. He, he, you kind of have to create it yourself. Canelo also has that habit where he doesn't fights at a slow pace. He doesn't really give you anything, but he gets you lunging in, reaching in, and then he starts to make you pay. And then from there, he starts to take control of the fight. Um, you're going to have the, – the deficiency I saw with Berlanga is he doesn't – create on his own. He kind of needs you to help him create. He throws everything too hard, and when you're not helping him create anything, a lot of shots aren't there. You know, he threw a lot of shot, hard shots, but a lot of them were on the gloves. A lot of them didn't get through, and then finally he broke him down. He broke McCrory down because McCrory really isn't of the level. I don't really think he was ever willing to be uncomfortable to get that win. While Berlanga was willing to be uncomfortable, he just never had to be uncomfortable. But from a thought process, from a psychological process, he doesn't understand how to create the attack and create the openings. And Canelo, he's going to have the same problem. Only with Canelo, when you force the attack, is a lot heavier price to pay. So it's things he's going to have to work on if he is to get the Canelo fight. Yeah, and you definitely don't want to miss Mark Foray and what he had to say on Big Fight Recap about uh, Edgar Berlanga's performance. Man, this was a good deep water. Well, it's always really good, but anytime you start talking about Canelo, it's going to get heated and interesting. All right, that does it for Deep Waters. Don't forget, like and subscribe to our YouTube channel and check out Wednesday Night Fights. It's going to be a good one this Wednesday here on Pro Box TV, your boxing channel.